Add it to the list, another tournament, another qualification for the U.S. men's national teams. In this case, the under-17s who have advanced to the under-17 World Cup, which will take place in November of this year in Peru. Granted, they were supposed to get here. We all know that. They had to get by Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago and Canada, Dominican Republic and Guatemala to make the semifinals, which is what they do. The winners of the quarterfinals, those four teams, all advance to that under-17 World Cup. In the big picture of things, it is incredible what the U.S. have done. They have now qualified for everything in their path. The under-17 World Cup, the under-20 World Cup, the Olympics, Paris, the 2026 World Cup, yeah, I know that they were, they're the hosts and they already qualified. But hey, they qualified for 2022. They're never going to miss another World Cup. You see, this is good. Those days where we used to freak out because they weren't in the Olympics or they may not have been in an under 17 or an under 20, it's, it's not happening anymore. Qualify for everything. It's a right old juggernaut. This is great. And we'll talk about the U.S. and their attempts to try and win this, which is important too. We'll have to win two more games. Uh, they beat Guatemala 5-3 to three in that quarterfinal game. So it wasn't that easy, to be honest. And, but this was hostile territory. As we've seen from the senior team, getting results down in Central America is difficult. But the under-17s, much like the under-20s before them, has been able to go into hostile territory and get results. The under-20s won that tournament. Now the under-17s look to do that. But we, we have a lot to, to pull out of this. Right at the top of the list is just a history that was made. And this is incredible that the U.S. have now qualified for, I believe it's an 18th under-17 World Cup. That is the most of anybody. More than Brazil. Brazil can match that if they, if they can qualify later, which they're going to. More than Brazil. More than Argentina. More than Nigeria, which is a huge under-17 program. More than Mexico. More than all of them. The U.S. are a machine when it comes to qualifying for the Under-17 World Cup. And it's important, this competition. Don't say, oh, these are 16 and 15-year-old kids, just like Whitney Houston sound, saying back in the day. I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. And our players that were in Under-17s before, and we'll talk about them, have led the way. And there's a very good chance this group will lead the way next. And we'll get into all the details here on the Soccer OG. I usually flash my Soccer OG logo right here, but instead I'm going to tell you about the Soccer OG store. Yes, it's up and running. We are very excited about it. Go to the slash OG slash shop zero dot myspreadshop.com. The slash OG slash shop zero dot myspreadshop.com. Do some shopping, look sharp in your next gathering, Put on the shirt, take a photo, send it here. We'll put it on the Soccer OG. We appreciate your support, and I'm very excited about this. We are growing every day, ever since the World Cup. Oh, yes, yeah, so please like and subscribe our video here. And, uh, yeah, sub subscribe. Do it right now. Thank you. So let's get into this game. First, how did they get here? U.S. scoring a ton of goals. Gonzalo Segares, the coach putting together a very talented team that is also deep, that is versatile, uh, and they are fun to watch. If you've watched any of these games, this Guatemala game, even though they struggled, uh, it was nice on the eyes. You saw some technical skills, some courageous uh, attempts. You saw athletes at the highest level. Uh, right at the top of that list is Carol Figueroa, a 16-year-old who is actually with the Liverpool Academy, not Liverpool in Chile or Uruguay. I'm talking about Liverpool in Liverpool in England. That's right. And he's already, he's at the age of 15, he was playing for the Liverpool under 18. So Jurgen Klopp has got him on his radar. This is an elite talent. And more than anything, he's got six goals in five games, by the way. He started the competition off the bench. Now he's a starter did pick up a knock against Guatemala. We hope he's okay. Uh, but this guy's a gift. So his father, Minor Figueroa, 
is a Honduran legend, much like great Central American players before him, Paulo Huanchope or Kaylor Navas, Navas, that you know broke through every barrier to be big stars in Europe. Minor Figueroa did that. Played in the Premier League with Wigan and Hull. And I know what you're thinking. Wigan and Hull were in the Premier League? I remember calling some of those games. Uh, how quickly the, the landscape has changed in England. But yes, those clubs were there. And then Figaro would come to Major League Soccer. Uh, he played for the Texas teams. I think last was with the Dynamo. He played into his 40s. Uh, an incredible player. Uh, just very cerebral. But his son, Keiror, has followed him along on his journey. And is now playing with the under-17s. Thank you. He, should be, he was born in Honduras. He could play for Honduras. He could play for England because he was with his father there. And he could play in the United States. Clearly, it looks like he's got a preference. Uh, he's enjoying, he's living his best life with the under-17s. And by the way, we, maybe we got to look closer to the players that we bring to Major League Soccer. This isn't the first instance of a Latin American player coming here and his son becoming a member of the U.S. teams. David Ferreira came from Colombia to play with FC Dallas. His son, Jesus, was with our World Cup roster. Still a very young, talented player that I'm very excited to see grow. So uh, keep them coming. <laughs> keep them coming. We like that. We need more streams for our national team. The more, the better. And we are building a really important foundation. Uh, Figueroa is joined by a lot of tremendous talents. Uh, Adrian Gill, much well documented that he's with La Masia, you know, arguably the best academy in the world there at Barcelona. So Barcelona identified him. He's played, he's been good, but he has not even been close to the most important player in this effort. Uh, Cruz Medina, wearing the number 10 shirt, plays with the San Jose Earthquakes. Uh, he's been fantastic. Christopher Aquino, um, the, uh, Paulo Rudisil, who I've really liked. I think he leads the tournament in assists. He's with the LA Galaxy Academy and our guy at LAFC, Christian Diaz, who's been rock solid in the back. So all these under-17s are popping off the screen, doing an incredible job, playing with confidence. It's a new day at this age level. Because when you're 13, 14, 15, you see the pathway. You have these academies in Major League Soccer and the European and South American juggernauts are watching and they see something, they will take it. And these players get to do that next step. So many have preceded them. That is, you know, this is big business now. And these guys can, they are stay on this trajectory. And there's a very good track record that they will, that they can continue to excel be stars for their national teams, be star. By the way, there's Americans on MLS academies on Mexico, on Guatemala there was players, on El Salvador. I, I, there's a ton of them. So these academies are, are building this tournament. And that's good. I feel good about that. But now that these guys can really excel their professional career, and the fun part about this is you get to see them take the early steps right now. So... Qualifying for everything. I mentioned the under-17s, the under-20s, the, the uh, Olympics. They'll qualify for Copa America, and they've qualified for the World Cup. Add to that, the U.S. senior team has won the Nations League and won the Gold Cup. So when, while I know we're far from perfect, and the sporting director situation and the coach needs to be filled, there was an interesting, it was, I believe it was Henry Bushnell uh, on speaking with uh, Ernie Stewart, that... Uh, a lot, of, a lot of the stuff came out of the wash. I thought it was interesting that Ernie Stewart would say, you know, if you watch the USA-Netherlands game at the World Cup, you disregarded the score and just looked at the play, you would think the U.S. was a better team. And it's hard to argue. So you can add that to the list too. There's a lot of good stuff happening. We still got we got a lot to fix, I know. But the kids are all right, you know? Just like Whitney Houston once sang, like I've pointed out before, the kids are all right. And we should be... Uh, excited about where they're going. But then again, as I said, getting to the semifinals of the under 17 is not a huge achievement. It's big in the context of things where the US are going, yes, 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 yes. Everything is falling into place. But you can see it with the level of players. They're getting important games, whether in the US or overseas. 
And there is again a track record. So you look at the under 17s. I'm gonna go all the way back to 1999. It was a tournament that I called, it was in New Zealand. The under 17s had a couple players for the US by the name of Demarcus Beasley and Landon Donovan and many others. This was the first time we saw Landon Donovan. And boy, did he uh, ever uh, hit all his uh, lofty, lofty goals. And then some. Arguably the greatest American player to have ever played. After that, in no particular order, here's some of the alumni to play for the under 17s through the years. Tyler Adams, Christian Pulisic, Luca Della Torre, Haji Wright, Serginio Dest, Tim Weah, Gio Reyna, Joe Scali. It's not like, it, it's, if you make it here, even at this early age, and I remember I spoke to Tab Ramos, who has been involved with the U.S. youth teams, and I go, when do you know a player has got that quality? And he told me immediately. When you see him at 12 or 13, you know right away. They're special, and maybe this guy is not. Doesn't mean they're all going to pan out. We have Freddie Adu, for instance, who's had a, you know, he's had a nice career. I don't want to, I don't want to minimize Freddie Adu, but we, were, we put him at a, at, on a pedestal. But if uh, these, these guys, when they're at this 15 or 16, they're pretty close to being those professional levels. And we've seen it with what's happened in the U.S. with this group of under-17s. So they've qualified for everything, 18 straight under-17s, star power coming through, second-generation footballers hitting their stride, and now the U.S. has some work to do. Win the tournament, right? I don't know if I said the tournament is in November in Peru. That's the under-17s. There is the under-20s is May in Indonesia. What a, what a great experience for these kids, right? What a great experience to go to Indonesia or Peru with your buddies and try and win a trophy. And we'll let you know if they can do it. First things first, the under-17. And this is big because... Mexico has been dominant in this tournament. They have won the last four. They have won five of the last six overall. And they have had a lot of success on the under-17 level. So the U.S. are in the semifinals. They played on Tuesday. I believe they play Friday uh, in the semis. Man, they put a lot on the plate for these kids. And then the final is Sunday. So it's a sprint of a tournament. The U.S. already beat Canada. We'll, we'll see if the Canadians beat Puerto Rico. Uh, the U.S. have hit a couple speed bumps, so to assume they'll win that game, we can't go that far. But if you win that game, you likely get Mexico in the final. And that is a big event. That, to me, is where all American soccer fans have to tune in. Because Mexico have won the last four. The U.S. hasn't won this since 2011. Uh, they have broken the dominance by Mexico almost at every other level with the exception of this one. And now, remember, Mexico didn't qualify for the under-20s, so Olympics. Mexico fell short in the under-20s. It was Dominican Republic and I think Guatemala uh, making it in front of them. It was uh, an embarrassment. So Mexico knows the under-17s is their baby. They can't let this go. So the United States has a chance to end that dominance and that is when we will know that the, the takeover is complete, right? And this is an important tournament for Mexico. Look at the under-17s. They have won it, the World Cup, twice. 2005, 2011. This was the springboard for Chicharito Hernandez and Carlos Vela and uh, Hector Herrera. And I want to say, say Rafa Marquez. I might be incorrect on that. I, I probably am. Dis disregard that last one. But... This is where these guys came around. And they were beating the best from Brazil and Nigeria and all these other countries. They won it twice. They were runners up to uh, two other occasions. They lost to Brazil in 2019. So the under-17s is Mexico's bag, baby. This is their competition. And now they're through to the semifinals and they've qualified for the World Cup. And first step, can the U.S. finish that job there? and then see if we can win it. Because the U.S. hasn't won an under-17 World Cup. They haven't made a final. They haven't made an under-20 final. They, haven't, they, 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 they make nice runs. They get out of the group stages, and then they clip a hurdle. 
every time. We want to get out of that practice. And I think we have the players that can certainly do just that. This is exciting stuff. The kids are delivering time and time again. Tune in. I think it's on FS2, maybe FS1 on Friday. And hopefully there's another game on Sunday. This team scores a ton of goals. And they have a swagger. There's no doubt about it. But now let's win some trophies. Let's win a under 17 or get a final. It's possible. Beat Mexico. Win the CONCACAF under 17s and see if we can make an under 17 and or under 20 final. Both those competitions coming up in 2023. You see what the U.S. has done? They're taking care of their fan. They've filled up the calendar. We have the under 20 World Cup. We have the under 17 World Cup. We'll have the Gold Cup, obviously. We have the Nations League. We'll have the Copa America. We'll have another Gold Cup in 2025. We'll have the World Cup in 2026. And we'll be here along for the ride. The Soccer OG. Check out the Soccer OG podcast where all podcasts are available. New one out right now. Go to the slash OG slash shop zero dot myspreadshop.com. Get yourself some merchandise and like and subscribe us and check out our entire video library here on YouTube under my name, Max Bretos. We'll be back again soon. So much happening.